and it meets himself, now that the sales are not going well, and this is something that myself and team were talking about at the start of the year, you know, Microsoft keeping a very uh, tight, you know, tightly approached and how much they sell and how many you know, things are going in. I think the Kramer gave up on even pretending it's doing well. And one of the <laughs> one of the one of the executives at Microsoft actually did relevant executives, he quit the company shortly after he uh, he was tweeting something negative about the platform and about the Nokia phones that are supposed to come up. He's basically completely gave up and maybe the company just pushed him out. So, you know, even even Microsofters that just don't manage to like the platform they're supposed to like or being told to like. And I, nobody's surprised about that. And I, I'm quite gratified to learn that the next Windows, uh, which will come sometime in the future, you know, is based on the same concept. So obviously they want to emulate the same, uh, you know, in quote, success story of Windows Phone 7. That's, that's fine with me. <laughs> and I, I told you what I think, the, how the user is going to react to that. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is so different. They'll just, they'll just show me this uh, whole different KDE thing or... It's more similar, but by that point, probably we'll have the KD5 uh, uh, development framework and all kinds of very nice applications. So I can imagine that they will have some fairly okay competitions, and the, the OEMs might not just put Windows on the computers. They might just put even something like a uh, uh, Google-based uh, distribution of Linux or something. Uh, so that, that's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, I'm going back to Google because Google gives away the operating systems mostly for free. Uh, which works well because of the business model and the framework for advertising which Google has, including the personalization and profiles, they know who you are, they know who your friends are, they know your home address. They, they now ask me for my telephone number, which is really strange. I just think, why, why would you need my telephone number? Are you going to call me? So, so uh, you know, and I'm not the only person to just... Well, you, you, your other option is to give them another email address. Yeah. You don't have to give them the telephone number, you can just give them another email. And I suppose if you're using their DNS server as well, sooner or later, they'll just kind of know all kinds of things about you. All the eights and all uh, the sixes, I think it is, isn't it? It's, uh, I think it's one, fours and eights or something. Like four. Oh, I thought it was all eights and all sixes, or was it two eights, two sixes? Or something? Maybe okay, I'll off something else. I think, yeah. well, it, it, and I mean, that, like, it, it, that's why I said, you know, there's reasons for this, getting into Google+, Plus, because it's like I said, they, they're calling it an ID service, and that is what it is. You know, they, they want a unified account to tie all these things together. <laughs> so they can tie it, but they, like you say, it's not they're trying to take over the world, it's for the reasons you're saying. Their business model is based on quantifying you for advertising metrics. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting, especially when you see the, uh, I know that, for example, when I search the web now, and I, I think I mentioned this in a previous show, uh, in, one thing they didn't do in the past is tie together the YouTube account with something like the search accounts and everything else. Now, if I, I prefer to uh, uh, when late, I search. been a big push to try and do that. All right, because in the past it was very separate and fragmented, perhaps in a good way. But now when I search the web, they get my account. They, they know who I am, basically. If, 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 all, if the only thing I just do is log into YouTube, maybe to leave a comment or to post something. And no, I, I just think this thing should be a bit separate. Did you notice the new login that came out recently? Um, like when they the login system? No, I haven't. Well, what's changed about it? They made a minor change to their login system that makes it more difficult than it's ever been to log in multiple Google accounts at once. Like it, it literally throws a conniption if you're trying to do that in the same browser. Yeah. And, and they start, you know, every five, like logging you out, going, no, no. What you really want to do is put this Google account under your master Google account. We see you have a Google Plus, so please just put all of this under your Google Plus account. They are making a renewed push for the master Google account. Yeah, maybe they want to merge uh, merge profiles a bit to yes. take some disk space and stuff to say, okay, well, we know this person is this person as well. Let's just kind of put it in the same uh, same basket. Uh, I'm yeah. not not a big fan of that, but I'm not sure it's. Well, there's a reason I have my profiles separate because I want them separate. <laughs> We'll end on uh, Google+, Plus, um, which is now uh, finally open to the public after what seems like a, a rather long time. And I think a few of us have been using it. I know I'm going to have to cut Roy out of this because uh, I don't believe Roy's uh, jumped on the bandwagon yet. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm jumped on the bandwagon, basically trying to persuade people not to, to join anything. <laughs> uh, to my point of view, just basically contributing your content, like blog posts and everything to Google, doing just uh, for their enjoyment, for their indexing, and also for them to gain more power. So I was in, I've was i seen quite a few people sort of leaving Identica and moving towards these services, and I'm just thinking, you know, you probably want to serve the, or to contribute to the smaller company, and I just move to where everyone else is, but the network effect means something else. 
I, I have to also say um, that Rusty wouldn't have joined if it hadn't been for my incessant bugging of him. Um, yeah, yeah. Ba- basically, <laughs> I, I, I share your viewpoint. However, Tim <laughs> is relentless. <laughs> yeah. But also, what probably made it worse was when I told Rusty a, a while back that um, I was in two minds between Google Plus and uh, Diaspora, which uh, was a bit of a kick in the teeth to Rusty. I'd worked on for about a month, I think, to try and get him onto Google Plus. And when I finally get him there, I tell him I might be going over to uh, Diaspora and leaving Google Plus completely. So um, I do feel sorry for uh, for Rusty, and my heart goes out to him. But uh, just my views on the on the Google Plus. Um, I know there's quite a few people who've given up or posting less now on Identica in favour of Google Plus. And I think the one thing that Google Plus and Diaspora and, dare I say, Facebook offer, which frustrates a lot of people with Identica, is you've got free reign on how much text you actually can put into your posts. Now, for me, Google Plus and Diaspora fall into a very nice little niche because sometimes you have something to say which is more than 140 characters. But not- I don't know if you've been following that back and forth conversation I've been having on your one of your yes, posts. Yes, Somebody just got, bring up. We now, should not have had that conversation with character caps. <laughs> you, you could, but it probably it, it, would, uh, it would it would have been a nightmare to write uh, with the 140 characters per reply. So <laughs> it's um, but it falls into a nice niche because for some somebody that wants to write something that maybe isn't up to the the full meat of a of a blog article in its own right, and maybe it's a little bit more than 140 characters in Identica, it falls in very nicely, and it's a nice place to throw in a few links and multiple links and have a little comment on each one, and uh, it's a nice way to amalgamate all your views in, into one relevant post. Um, and also you can then link that post for other people to see, and it's open to the public. So, But I, I think with Google+, and all these type of things, they're very self-serving, and the big thing's made... And people say about Google Plus, oh, you are the product, and whoa, you, you can't join Google because they use you as a, as a product, and you're being monitored and stuff. But I think it's it's a little bit two way because with people that use Google Plus, you can put out your viewpoints, you can get your name known, you can promote your site, your work, and yes, Google may be collecting data on you and your friends and monitoring you and selling your information onto whatever. They may well be doing that, but at the end of the day, you get something back as well, which is exposure of your opinion and uh, points of view. Um, Looking at Google Plus though, and it's again it suffers with a very similar scenario to Twitter and Identica. On Google Plus, you have a few celebrities. I'm trying to wrap my brain as to who I've seen on there. I think Paris Hilton was one. Well, uh, <laughs> um, uh, is on there. Yeah, Linus is on there. I don't believe he's posted yet though. Or could I, I'm uh, yeah, he has. Yeah, has he? Oh, beg your pardon. Right. Well, maybe okay, it's automated. Right. Maybe it's maybe it's automated in the sense that uh, when he posts something on a uh, on the mailing the, on an LKML. Maybe it's like uh, doing a copy. Yeah. No, but, no, I think you know you yeah. did actually post properly. I mean, to be fair, we're talking mainstream, so maybe whilst uh, Paris Hilton is no uh, Richard Stallman or uh, any sort of pioneer for the. Well, for I, you know, personally, uh, why he's not the type of celebrity you're talking about, I would consider Mark Zuckerberg a mainstream. <laughs> yeah, well, he's on there, but he definitely hasn't posted because um, I have seen him on there, um, and I don't think he's a. Uh, He's ever made a comment. Or a yeah, comment. he was one of the first people to insist on privacy, of all things. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, and you throw him off my tread now. What was it? Yes, so Google Plus, it has some of the celebrities that the mainstream might migrate to, whereas Diaspora is and, more... And, and, and honestly, I, I don't think that's the real selling point of these services. Like you said, celebrities are you know great for the, you know, uh, I, I guess over here we call them the MTV crowd, because MTV has nothing to do with music at all anymore. Um, and the MTV crowd. Well, how would you how would you describe it now? I'm just curious. How would you describe it now? Sorry, a uh, celebrity, a, a reality TV for the worst aspects of of people. <laughs> and, and and it's what and it's what gets the mainstream user. It's what makes Twitter you know, have have millions and millions of users over Identica because it's what attracts the mainstream masses. Now with a social network it's a sort of, it's a vicious circle because people go where their friends are. And for example, if all my friends are over on Twitter, regardless of what I think of it, and regardless of the fact that it's swamped with celebrities, I am forced in a way to go over to it because if I want to contact my friends and my colleagues, the only way to do it is via Twitter. Um, and that's just an example of how that, that that's the thing. Like you say, you're talking about celebrities and stuff, but at the end of the day what people care about more is whoever their inner circle mm. is. They care about yeah. even those people. And uh, why Google Plus is useful at, may, at maintaining the streams on the desktop 
it's the night and day difference between the experience on the desktop and on the Android platform or, you know, the application on the mobile platform. I mean, you're, you're walking around and it's like, okay, tell me what I'm interested in that's within blah miles of me. 